The moment we got our boat, we felt like from day one we had a whole list of improvements ready and readily prioritized. We thought we definitely have to change the hatches as the UV cracks looked pretty bad. That never happened. So then we got into boat life and smart people told us not to change anything that's not broken. And wait before investing, improving and replacing. Wait until you want it three times and then write it on your list. Wait until you actually sail the boat and realize what's important and what's just a fad. Well, here we are after one year and the improvements you see in this video are maybe not the ones you expected but the ones that improve our comfort at sea and anchor the most. It's the little things, but they make a big difference day to day. So we got a lot of comments about this issue last season because we didn't do it. The boom strap. We didn't know what that slider was for, but now we know it is to pull down the sail onto the boom so the outhaul doesn't go diagonally but horizontally to the boom. It's actually what we learned from dinghy sailing when we reefed that we have to pull down the clue of the, of the mainsail but somehow we totally forgot about that and now we fixed it. Does this work again? Pull it back. Yeah. They have that line on the one side and then you go back through it. So another nice thing about this kind of method is the line, the thread in this speedy stitcher is waxed. It's called whipping twine. And the way you end your stitch is with a lighter. You just light the ends of the twine and they shrink. So once that twine shrank down and you have a little bubble on top, you just hit it with your lighter and you make it into a nail head. And then that won't come undone. It won't go through the hole anymore and it's gonna be stuck forever. I recommend a storm lighter because you will probably do this while on an anchorage in heavy winds and this will always work. Also unrelated note, get a creme brulee lighter that's a bit bigger and stronger which can also be used for soldering. I finally fixed the wind generator so now when we are on the anchorage and we have 10 to 15 knots of wind right now we get 5 amps through the wind gen and a 90 watt panel. It does make some noise and the boat vibrates a bit. It's bearable. It's not too bad because you know your batteries are getting filled up. Your neighbors probably don't like you that much. If they hear that, that mainly just means that they anchor too close. So it's good for everyone. We can turn it off with the flick of a button. Then it actually sends some energy back to the generator, which then activates the, uh, the electromagnetic field and then uh, stops the blades from whirring. In heavy winds, they just turn like really slowly. I don't know why that's important. One of the most obvious improvements this season is the new Bimini. It is massive and it came from a 43 foot Jeannot. Now it goes from the push pit to the push pit, whilst before our Bimini was kind of small and it went from the inside of the combing to the other side of the combing. So we had better access walking outside forward, but there was no shade at all. Somehow the sun always came through. That bugged many a lot. So she decided that we need a new Bimini. She found this Bimini on Milanuncios, which is something like Craigslist. Well, we got it for a really good price. 120 euros for the stainless construction. Unfortunately, we did not have the cloth. So we had to get that made by a nice woman in the marina. She actually does that in her boat, which is quite impressive because yeah, that it. thing is massive. And the boat is only 32 foot. So she has a small boat and she produces all these things for basically the whole marina. It's pretty cool. We have a little netted window right next to the helm so we can see the sails flapping whenever Alex doesn't trim them right. We just have to say so Mandy can see the sails and trim. Okay. So the sailor girl Mandy can see the sail and trim it. Okay. So my life is great now. Well, so is mine. Good. Yeah, also her life is great because Mandy finishes things. <laughs> With the help of me, because honestly, I did the fuck.
Now, in all honesty, we had to get some connectors and we had to bend the stainless a bit. There's a whole 40 minutes of an episode if you actually want to see that. We might look through the footage and make an entertaining and informative video about how we attach that 43 foot bimini on a 36 foot boat. You might remember from the boat tour video that we have solar panels on top of the bimini. We have a new bimini so we have to attach the solar panels freshly and very securely with springy, springy cords. And also we have a deck shower outlet which was broken and that's where the cables for the, for the solar came out last season. Kind of a dirty fix because the cable didn't fit through the through the deck shower outlet we had to drill through the boat put new through holes how do you call them deck deck fittings that was also kind of interesting because of course I didn't look up how to do it and I cracked the gel coat then I decided to look it up on YouTube and found a way to do it very nicely the second and the third deck fitting went really easy and looked amazing so I'm very proud of my handiwork newly acquired skills. Alex found something floating in the water, so he picked it up. I think the wind's a bit bad. And he is now going through the anchorage, I think. Probably looking for its owner. <laughs> I can't see him, but I can hear the dinghy. So you did not find the owner? Um, some Swedish boat told me that two catamarans left and they had the same kind of cushions. Yeah. So that goes off the deposit and we have a new pillow. Great. Yep. That's what we wanted. I thought it was a floating device. Like yeah, me too. New responsibility. Yes, maybe we leave it on the beach in a chair and somebody has a comfort chair. Maybe. That's a good idea. So the backstays go through the bimini, through a little hole that is um, double layered so it doesn't shape that much. And for additional protection I just found some foam and cable tied it around the area of the bimini. Another hopefully useful investment is our new Wi-Fi system. Jeez, I'm bright. It's the Wi-Fi Camp Pro by Alpha. I just attached the Wi-Fi antenna to the wind generator pole. There's a long USB cable on it that connects to the inside router with additional Wi-Fi. So the outside antenna connects to any restaurant Wi-Fi you may find at the anchorage. And then it just relays the signal to the inside router that then creates a Wi-Fi for the boat. It's still in trial mode. So now the cable just runs through the cockpit whenever we want to try it out. We do find a lot of Wi-Fi's right here, but that's mainly the super yachts and the charter boats with all their 4G mini routers. But as soon as we are closer to a restaurant on the beach, we might be lucky and can steal their internet. The little alpha router inside runs on 12 volts, so we just connect it to the 12 volt domestics. Just grab any voltage you can find and turn it on and off whenever we need it. <laughs> Also, end of last season, we noticed that the core of one of the Genoa sheets was broken, so we got new lines. This time, black, because I think we found a new color scheme. Black, red, and white. So apart from my awesome cockpit cushions and the really awesome improvement of the Bimini, we also had another thing that was really needed in the cockpit, and that are these cup holders. These and the ones over here and over there because last year when we were sailing it was impossible to keep anything in the cockpit like we didn't know where to put our phones or if you had a ball of water it was always flying around and anything else you had sunscreen no place to put it so we got a bunch of cup holders now they are kind of ridiculously overpriced but they are very useful so we got those plus we asked the woman who made this bimini cloth for us to also put a couple of pockets in our spray head so we can put like a sunscreen in there or whatever stuff like that so it doesn't need to fly around and on top of that we got new windows in our spray hood since the spray hood was at Rosanna I also asked her to replace the windows of the spray hood 
they're a bit dirty right now. They're a lot better than the old ones, which had little holes everywhere and was leaking and also it was just really hard to see through. So hopefully when it's a rainy day, we will stay dry and we can see through. So Alex already said that we got new Genoa lines. We also got some new main halyard and a new Genoa halyard, which was actually quite a hassle to get through. And we'll show you how we did that because that was a job, but it was quite exciting. We are connecting our new halyard together like this. And then we're gonna sew it together. We're going to tape it and slowly pull it through the mast until the new line is all the way through. So I got here my palm, which is pretty nice. It's just a piece of leather with a very hard piece in here. So if you have to put pressure on the needle, you can put it on here and you're not gonna kill your hands. So we're just gonna push this through, come out the other end and then just pull it. And then it's gonna be really stuck here, you know? I'm gonna pull it really hard and you see it won't go through. I'm gonna take the other line, I'm gonna push it through the end. Make sure I don't hurt myself. And then we are going to get these together like that. And then we're gonna do this on four sides at least. Through this end again. Pull it through. You really have to put a lot of force behind it with this thing, so if you don't have this, use something else that's hard because it's gonna really hurt you if you don't. See, so I'm gonna go one last time on the other side. All right, pull it. Has to be tight though. All right, so we cut it. Look at that, look at the nail. There we go, here it is. This is now nice. And connect it. The next step is the guy used rigging tape, which we don't have. Instead, we're going to use insulation tape. Just gonna put that around. All right. So this looks pretty smooth. It looks good, huh? All right, so we're first flaking the line. Happy with the line? It's a great line. <laughs> you're still watching? I admire your attention, man. <laughs> All right, go. off we go. So this is the critical point. It's a bit stiffer than the rest of the line. And we have to get that through the jammer, around the blocks, into the mast, and then up there, around the roller, and back down again. The critical point will be right there at the roller where we just keep some tension on both lines, on both ends. So we just flip those over so it doesn't switch any of those rollers or goes in between. Oh God. Ooh, the first one was a little bit difficult. It was blocky already. Off we go. Bye bye. No way back. Alright, so that's. I think it's at the top now, and we have to get that end through. And I don't know how. So that's not as easy as it looks. Come on! Ah. Anyways. All right, so this got stuck here, obviously. So it seems that our quadruple eight knot from the beginning is the issue, it's quite big. Eventually we just cut the quadruple eight knot and use that one centimeter excess line, burnt it, Let's see. test the strength. Seems quite strong. There we go. Stuck again. So much for a simple job. Ah, 
how you can see. But Alex managed. He managed. Yeah. yeah. Thanks to the saliva. Oh, true. I spit on it. Of Mandy. <laughs> there you go, baby. You did it. Got it back. Is the line long enough? I hope so. Does it look like it? Yep. Quite long. Look left. There you have it. The thing we also changed, which was mainly my concern since I'm always worried about our batteries and our energy level, is the navigation light. So instead of 25 watts, which is the one here in the front that gives us the red and the green navigation light, it does only two or three watts. And the navigation light on the stern of the boat actually only uses 0.6 watts instead of 10. I will be sleeping a lot better when we're on the sail now. Don't click away just yet because now we're going to go inside where there's a lot more of improvements. Okay, so the first thing we did, which is the best improvement, I think, if you want to have a comfortable life, is we got a new tap. One that is way higher than the old one because now you can actually put pots under it and bigger things and you can actually move stuff around because, you know, the sink is also used as a cutting board slash countertop. And before the tap was always so low that if you put stuff on the counter and you needed to go inside the sink, it was always, the tap was always in the way. So we got a bigger one, it's very high, and I can put anything under it and cleaning is just so easy. <laughs> Stop wasting water. Of course, our old water filter didn't fit on a new tap. So we got ourselves a new one, which actually is really small and really handy and that means that we can just keep drinking the water from the tanks which is extremely chloride here in Spain it works and we can drink it the only thing though is if you open the tap too much which you generally do right away this thing sprays everywhere and the good thing is it's right next to the navigation table with all of our electronics so that tends to get a bit sprayed now <laughs> we also decided to change the tap in the head because the old one was ugly and a bit too high and you can see this one fits a bit better and it looks quite nice. So to keep me safe on passages and on wobbly anchorages, we got something that is very important for my head and that is this little spring thing on the, <laughs> the fridge door or what is it, the fridge hatch. When we were sailing or when we're on anchorage right now that's really wobbly and I want to get something out of the fridge, this thing tends to fall down and I've gotten it on my head a couple of times and it really hurts. And this is really nice, it stays, but if you want to put it in, you just push it and then voila. So simple, but our boat didn't have it and you really need that if you don't want to get a hole in your head. So Alex and I really enjoy cooking. So we spend a lot of time in the galley and we have a lot of kitchen stuff and this was always kind of flying around everywhere especially here on top because this is kind of where we just put everything that was too big to fit in a cupboard or in a drawer so instead of keeping everything up there i i filled our whole cupboard with these tiny little hooks that i can just screw in which really gave alex a heartache because well i had to make holes in the wood in the boat but it's inside the cupboard so it should be fine and I can now hang up anything here. Now we have easy access to it all. It doesn't fly around. The only thing is that when the boat wobbles a lot, some things tend to make a bit of noise. But well, you give up a little bit of comfort to gain more and then give up a bit more. There's a weird sentence. So in case you're wondering what I did with my finger, another improvement that we got was a really good knife. I cut off half my nail yesterday. But it's good for cooking and it makes cooking easier because you can cut way faster. And we put the knife on this little magnet plate so it can't fly around because you don't want big knives flying through your boat. And we didn't really want to put it outside the cupboard in case it does fly off. So this is here and very handy. Alex? Yes? Can you get me a generic item number three from the build? Okay, where is it? Um, it's in the one that's the hardest to reach, right there in the corner. Not a problem. Do you 
you need this. We have a lot of food in the bilges and our floorboards have little hooks to lift them, but not all of them. And of course, the things we need the most, we put them in the bilge that is furthest away. But I came up with a great invention, which is getting little straps, cutting them to a piece and attaching them on the sides of every floorboard. So now we can lift them without going through every floorboard on the boat. Because I like to make the boat feel like home, I got something that makes it feel very homey and that is a clock, because I like to know time, and a weather station. So we know the temperature. Totally forgot that we installed a new battery monitor with the shunt, the Victron Smart Monitor. So with this app, we can now see the state of charge at all times and also the current that's flowing in or out and how much time we have remaining until the battery is halfway dead. Is the tsunami over? No, it's coming back. It's coming back, all right. Hold on! <laughs> the Cala Saona is a very protected anchorage on Formentera and that's why a lot of boats come here. But at the same time, because of a lot of boats, there's a lot of swell and the super yachts that pass by from far away, no blame, they go full throttle and once every, I don't know, 20 minutes, we just get a massive tsunami and every boat in the anchorage gets slammed. But uh, we are worse than most because we have a flat bottom and that just makes this boat very rolly. It's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so apart from the obvious big changes that you've seen, most of the things we did this year were quite minor. They seem insignificant, but they're really not. It's those little things that make our lives so much easier every day. So if you are a creative boat person and you have a lot of secret inventions, then put them in the comments so they are not that secret anymore and everybody can gain from them, especially us, because we would love to improve our boats. Okay, bye.